Welcome to the Broadway.com show, your weekly guide to everything on stage. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Imogen Lloyd Webber. This week we hit the red carpet with Hello Dolly star Bernadette Peters, hang out with Tina Fey and the stars of Broadway's Mean Girls, and more. And later we sit down with Wicked leading lady Jackie Burns, who shares what it's like to be back in Oz as Elphaba. But first, let's get started with the news. What's the buzz, Imogen? After an acclaimed run last year at Off-Broadway's second stage, Harvey Firestein's groundbreaking 1983 Tony-winning play Torch Song will return to Broadway this fall. The revival, starring Michael Urie and Mercedes Rule, is slated to open on November the 1st at the play's original main stem home, The Helen Hayes, which is now owned by Second Stage. Directed by Moises Kaufman, the show follows the odyssey of Arnold Beckhoff to find happiness in New York. All he wants is a husband, a child and a pair of bunny slippers that fit. But a visit from his overbearing mother reminds him that he needs one thing more. Respect. Don't we all just want a pair of bunny slippers that fit? Well, that and a pair of really great heels. I think Michael Urie has both. We knew Oscar winner Aaron Sorkin was adapting Harper Lee's Pulitzer Prize winning novel To Kill a Mockingbird for Broadway, and now we know the amazing stars in the cast. Jeff Daniels is taking on the iconic role of small town lawyer Atticus Finch in this story of racial injustice and the loss of childhood innocence. Celia Keen Bolger and Will Pullen are set to play his children, Scout and Jem. Stark Sands, Latanya Richardson Jackson, Gideon Glick, Dakin Matthews, Benga Akina Bay, Frederick Weller, Aaron Willemi, Stephen McKinley Henderson, and more are also in the company. Bartlett Shear is directing the play, which will begin performances on November 1st and open on December 13th. And lest you think this talent-heavy company couldn't get any better, Tony-winning composer Adam Gettle is penning original music for the production. Broadway, here he comes. Sorry, couldn't resist. Smash Adam, Jack Davenport, Walter Bobby, Adam Chana Berat, John Glover, Daniel Sanjata, and Patrick Page are heading to the Samuel J. Friedman Theatre. The starry lineup will appear alongside Condola Rashad in the new Great White Way production of George Bernard Shaw's Saint Joan, directed by Daniel Sullivan. Opening night is set for April the 25th. Meanwhile, Dan Butler completes the cast in the upcoming Broadway revival of Travesties, stepping in as Lenin for the previously announced Nicholas Wooderson, who had scheduling conflicts. Helmed by Patrick Marber, Tom Stoppard's Tony-winning play will open on April the 24th at the American Airlines Theatre. And in case you're wondering, the Tony cutoff date for this year is April the 26th. Hallelujah, we have more casting for Jesus Christ Superstar Live. Two-time Tony nominee Brandon Victor Dixon has been added to the starry company of this highly anticipated TV presentation as Judas in the Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice musical. Also joining the cast are Ben Daniels as Pontius Pilate, Norm Lewis as Caiaphas, Jason Tam as Peter, Jin Ha as Annis, and Eric Ronwell as Simon. As previously announced, John Legend will play the title role with Alice Cooper as King Herod and waitress creator and star Sarah Bareilles as Mary Magdalene. The broadcast will take place on Easter Sunday, April 1st. Will you be watching on Easter, Imogen? Of course, it's my church, but with live tweeting. We know them so well. Michael Ball will appear as Anatoly alongside Alexandra Burke as Svetlana and Cassidy Jansen as Florence in the upcoming five-week London return of Chess. Original West End star Mary Head has signed on as the Arbiter with Tim Hower, lead singer of Mike and the Mechanics, as Freddie. The classic tuna begins performances at the London Coliseum on April the 26th. In other news from across the pond, a trio of talented stars have signed on for the West End return of Chicago at the Phoenix Theatre. Ruthie Henshaw is set to take on the role of Matron Mama Morton, alongside Josefina Gabrielle as Velma Kelly and Sarah Sotard as Roxy Hart. Headlined by Cuba Cooding Jr., the classic musical will begin on March 26th. And yes, I've got to say it, hotcha. I knew you were going to say that. And I knew you knew it's a tradition. You know him from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, Cinderella, Frozen, and what feels like every upcoming Broadway musical. And now, Tony nominee Santino Fontana is stepping into the hit revival of Hello, Dolly. He will join headliners Bernadette Peters and Victor Garber when he takes over the role of Cornelius Hackle from Tony winner Kevin Creel, beginning on March 13th. Creel, who will be out of the show for a spell as he recovers from back surgery, has given his stamp of approval to his temporary replacement. Santino's an amazing performer, he said. He'll be absolutely wonderful in the part. Now that's a ringing endorsement. When we come back, we chat with Chris Evans, Michael Cera, and the cast of Lobby Hero, catch up with Dear Evan Hansen headliner Taylor Trench, and more. This week on Broadway.com, the Phantom of the Opera vlogger, Ali Ewalt, talks about Christine's kissing partners, and we catch up with the stars of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, Mean Girls, and more in our spring preview special. Everyone's celebrating John Lithgow's return to Broadway in Stories by Heart. It's uplifting and superb, a joyful night of pure entertainment. You can't miss John Lithgow in Stories by Heart through March 4th only. This is delightful. Hey guys, 
This is Paul Alexander Nolan. And this is Allison Luff. And you're watching The The Broadway.com Show. Show. Welcome back. Bernadette Peters is back where she belongs on Broadway in Hello, Dolly. The Tony-winning revival celebrated a very special opening for Peters this past week. We hit the red carpet to talk to the two-time Tony winner about returning to the Great White Way as that delightful meddling matchmaker, Dolly Levi. I feel terrific. It was a great show and a great audience. It was opening night. It was just, it's such a great role. So, and I love the show. The energy was brilliant. I've never had like a second opening of a show. So I was unsure of what to expect. It's brilliant. I mean, we've had Bette Midler, we've had Donna Murphy, and now we've had Bernadette freaking Peters. Are you kidding? It's brilliant. Everybody is so excited. It was like we were at the Olympics. We were the Olympians and we had just gotten a perfect score and everybody screamed and stood up. Hello Dolly's cast and company revealed what it's been like taking the stage with Broadway legend Peters. She's like my childhood icon. I mean I watched the like video of her doing Sunday in the Park with George and Into the Woods and I feel like she's such a big part of like why I started acting in the first place and for me to be making my Broadway debut next to her is tr- is beyond anything I could have imagined. It's really extraordinary. She's also a star with the company. A, a leading lady or a leading man isn't just someone who's good at their job. It's someone who comes in and leads the company and shows the company the standard of what the show has to be. And to come from someone who is such a, su- such a name and such a star and to have such grace and will do things like come up to our dressing room and see how we're doing to come up three flights of stairs. Like, you know, that's just incredible. So she is a leading lady and she is a star. Well, Victor Garber is divine. I couldn't ask for a better person to share the stage with. And I was so thrilled that Kate Baldwin, she was, I love her. She's brilliant in the role. She stayed and, and Gavin stayed also. And then Charlie Stamp came from, from London to be with us. And it's a, it's a great cast. It's a wonderful place to be in the world right now, to come to the show. (laughs) Gives you hope, and it's about love, and opening your heart, lifting your spirits, and you leave the theater feeling better than when you came in. Watch your back. Mean Girls is headed to Broadway. Tita Fey's 2004 comedy classic explores what happens when a high school newbie crosses a trio of ferocious frenemies that rule the hall. Talk about drama worthy of the great white way. We caught up with Faye, the Plastics, and the rest of the company to get the scoop on bringing this funny film favorite center stage. So Mean Girls Musical is about Kate Heron, who leaves her home in Africa and comes to suburban high school and gets caught up on all the complications that a teenage girl in that phase of life goes through. Janice and Damien sort of take take her under her wing, and but then she gets exposed to the plastics, who are the evil, conniving, gorgeous uh, head of the school. Yeah. yeah, and then all hell breaks loose. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, it's, it's really fun. It's set in high school. Everyone relates to it, and it really lent itself to singing and dancing. It was one thing to go in and go like, well, we don't want to just write a pop music score, which feels like maybe what a lot of people might want to do with it. We want it to feel like it's a real piece of theater. We knew we wanted to make it cohesive, but still really eclectic. Like high school. Mean Girls scribe Tina Fey shared what it feels like to be one of Broadway's queen bees this season. I'm a theater nerd from high school. And uh, yes, I was always like in the chorus and hot gluing costumes, because I'm not a great singer, guys. (laughs) But I'm a worse dancer. Uh, <laughs> so this has uh, been a dream to write for Broadway, for sure. I think my sense of humor, as like Gray's sense of humor, has developed yeah. because of Tina Fey. And the fact that we get to be with her and work with her in a room is like unbelievable. Yeah. And it's like, it's, crazy. It, it, it's everything you would want it to be. And she's everything you would expect her to be. Yeah. Um, and more. And it yeah. feels very normal now that she's like, our boss, our boss Tina, but it's not its not normal at all. Yeah. We're extremely lucky. Yeah. <laughs> she's been so humble and generous and um, really let us make the parts our own, not have to copy the people from the movie. Her humor, her humility, and her like work ethic really match how talented she is. And it, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, She's a boss. She's a boss. She's yeah. a boss lady. Yeah. She's always thinking. My favorite thing watching Tina in rehearsals was her mouth doesn't stop moving. She's like quietly talking to herself. And you can see that she's just thinking of like, how can I make that line better? Yeah. How can that dialogue sound more natural for that actor? She's always, her brain is always going, 
probably a thousand miles a minute. According to Mean Girls cast and creative team, diehard fans of the film can rest assured the story is in good hands. I think we've stayed really true to the heart and soul of the movie. I'm a huge fan of the movie too, and I keep telling people like, don't worry, it's great. It's got the same Tina Fey tone, you've got Glenn Coco in there, you know, <laughs> and then you've got some more jokes that we haven't heard yet, but that are still in line with that really smart, authentic uh, high school setting. I'm really excited. I'm excited. Yeah. It's gonna be good. Kenneth Lonergan's Lobby Hero takes place in the lobby of a Manhattan apartment building as cops and security guards clash. We spoke with stars Chris Evans, Michael Cera, Belle Powley, and Brian Tyree Henry to find out more about this 2001 play making its Broadway debut in 2018. Lobby Hero is about the moral and legal problems of two security guards and two police officers in 1999 in New York City. I was interested in the uh, idea of uh, four people wearing nearly identical uniforms. Two of them have guns and are armed and two of them don't have guns and are not armed. You know, the play really is taking place over a course of four nights um, and uh, we just all confront all these things in the lobby. <laughs> this play was written in 1999 and um, it doesn't feel any less relevant. It feels more relevant in a way than when it was written. Right now especially it feels sort of eerily relevant. I mean eerily prescient. I mean in its discussion of specifically I think of, of sexual harassment um, in light of where we're at culturally right now it's unbelievable how um, it, it feels like it could have been written today. The cast shared what it is about Lonergan's writing that speaks to them. Kenny Lonergan is obviously, you know, a bit of a legend. Um, I'd also been looking to do a play for a really, really long time. And as a woman, it's, you know, hard to find really amazing female roles in theatre. Um, and this is definitely one of them. When you have total faith in the writing, I think, which is very important uh, for me, because then you can not worry about that and just worry about how to bring it to life the best way possible and try and do it justice. and. Um, it's just the kind of material you wait for and the kind of part that you wait for, hope for. I really am a jerk in the, in the play. I'm a jerk. I'm a horrible guy. But, but, but it's, it, hopefully it'll stir a lot of emotions. You know, I think that's the, the point of theater, to kind of get you thinking and talking. Uh, hopefully it's not something you just kind of sit through and the second you walk out of the building it's just, you know, deleted. You hope it's something that stays with you. They also dished on what it's like to rock those uniforms. I actually had a costume fitting yesterday and um, turns out they don't actually make police uniforms in my size. So they've had to like get the smallest police uniform possible and then like take it apart and like put it together again into an even smaller size. Yeah, they're hot. They're hot. They're toasty. Uh, but, you know, it, it lends itself to the character. You can't help but sit up straighter. When like Chris and Belle come in dressed as cops, the intimidation factor goes up like 10 degrees. It really does inform how you move, what your relationship is to the people around you. And um, yeah, and we look damn awesome in them. Like they look really cool. I was like, uh, maybe I can rock this somewhere else. I don't know. Taylor Trench is a new headliner of the Tony winning musical Dear Evan Hansen. We recently checked in with a young talent to get his take on the intense role at the center of this emotional story. He's trying to give this family what they need. They're grieving and they're they're like have been completely like torn asunder by what's happened. It begins as him doing something that he believes to be like altruistic and good. It's just like providing them with some sort of comfort. And obviously as the show progresses we get into like murky territory, but what I love about the show is that we don't we don't like comment on his behavior, but yeah, at his heart, he thinks he's doing the right thing. I think Evan is uh, inside all of us a little bit. Like at his core, he just wants to be seen and validated and heard and understood. So I think he's just very human. And so I'm just trying to like bring a lot of myself to it um, because I think also that'll make it interesting and different than what Noah and Ben did with the role. Trench follows in the footsteps of previous Evan Hansen's Ben Platt and Noah Galvin. He explained what it's like to be a part of the Blue Polo Brotherhood. A real Blue Polo tight-knit brotherhood. Yeah, and we were actually, we were all friends before any of this happened to us. So it's been really special and neat and um, fun to like have to share this experience. The dear Evan Hansen fan base is a truly dedicated one. Trench told us what it means to share his performance with audiences. It's such a testament to the show, how powerful and moving and compelling and, and universal it is that people have gripped onto it and love it so much. When I talk to people afterwards at the stage door, it's just like an outpouring of love and it's a, like a really special group of people.
I hope they're able to recognize themselves up on stage in, in all of the characters, but especially in Evan. When we return, Wicked star Jackie Burns tells us all about returning to the role of Green Girl Elphaba in the Broadway smash. Everyone's celebrating John Lithgow's return to Broadway in Stories by Heart. It's uplifting and superb, a joyful night of pure entertainment. You can't miss John Lithgow in Stories by Heart through March 4th only. This is delightful. Broadway favorite Jackie Burns made her triumphant return to the role of Elphaba in Wicked this past summer, and fans have been losing their shiznit and excitement ever since. I sat down with Burns to chat about how it feels to be defying gravity at the Gershwin Theater again, what she loves most about playing the Green Girl, and how being a part of the Broadway blockbuster has changed her for good. Hi, Jackie. Hi. Thank you so much for coming in and Thank chatting you. with us. Uh, first of all, I have to say it's so nice to be talking to a fellow UConn alum. You went to UConn? I went to UConn. He I waited did. to tell me this till the camera was rolling <laughs> so he could get a that's genuine right, was, reaction. Shut right. up, I did, real? yeah. But thank you so much. It's so nice to chat with you. Yes. How does it feel to be back in Oz, to be back in Wicked? It's so fun. Yeah? I'm actually having, the, I'm having a better time than I did the first time. Not that I didn't have a great time the first sure. time, but it's even more fun and magical the second time around. Yeah, what's different about it this time for you? Um, I'm different. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I've had more life experiences and I think the the more life experiences you have as an actor, the more you have to draw upon, the more the better your performance is going to be and totally. more well-rounded and more grounded. Um, and also, you know, the first time it was scarier and this time it's like felt like it was coming home where I could find more mm -hmm. things and nuance more things and uh I also love this cast so yeah, much. Yeah, you have a great cast They're there so with great. you. And we all got to go in together, which was really cool. So that helped a lot having a whole rehearsal process with the five of us, mm -hmm. um, which was really, really fun. Yeah, I know you've opened up before about how the first time you lived like a nun. I did. And which is very common for yes. Alpha Buzz. But this time you were going, to, you were going to be you yeah. playing Alpha Buzz in Wicked, but you. That's and how, right. how has that... How has that worked out? Do you Are you having more fun with it? Is I that... am having more fun. Well, look, I mean, I showed up with this big hair because I just was like, <laughs> I don't, I day. came, it was a humid day here. <laughs> so I said, I'm just gonna rock it. No, I'm having more fun. I, I I play more, it's more free. You know, you I know the character so well now. Mm -hmm. She's become such a part of me and sure. my fiber of my being that it's like a second skin and it just frees me up as an actor to truly live in the moment. Yeah. How do you keep your performance fresh and interesting, not only for you, but for the audience? Because, I mean, this is a machine at this point. Totally. How do you, how do you keep it fulfilling? I mean, I think as every actor, you go through struggles and ups and downs where it's easier and not easier, and then, you know, it's, it's all cyclical. But when you have actors like Amanda Jane and, and Ashley and that are always in it and present with you, they force you to be in the show yeah. in, in, in the moment just as much as you force them. So we all have accountability for one another. Right. And also the audiences are different. Yeah. It's like even monthly, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Each month has its like own, you know, kind of feeling to it, yeah. which is interesting and fun as yeah. an actor. A lot of the other Alphabas have opened up about this green girl sisterhood yes. that comes from playing Alphaba. How how special, important is that to you? Oh my god, I, one of my best friends is Dee Razzioli. I love her more than life itself. She replaced me on the tour. Um, I, I like, you just love all your Alphabas because you Nobody understands. Absolutely, it's a until singular. you, yeah, until you do it, and you all have this bond of like, hey, yeah, girl, I know. What do <laughs> right. you like? What do you right, need? Right. Like you're doing it because mm -hmm. it does. It gets, and it's funny. Our dresser Kathy um, Mull, who's amazing, has dressed every single alphabet. Oh wow! Okay. Since the yeah. beginning, so she's had all of us. Every standby, every understudy, every right. alphabet. She knows it all. And we all have the same issues. <laughs> like, she's like, you're not special. I've heard this before. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> but th this, the show will be celebrating 15 years I know. this October. It's crazy? a huge year to be a part of Wicked. Yeah. And the fans of this show, I mean, Broadway fans in general are incredible. Yes. But the Wicked fans are legion. What do you, where do you think that dedication to this show, and to particularly Elphaba with these fans, comes from? I think that... There, I don't think there's one person, man, woman, on this planet that doesn't have a trait of alphabet in them. That mm -hmm. has not at one point in their life felt like an outsider. Right. I don't yeah. care how cool you are or how famous you are or how rich you are or how poor you are. And no matter what, everybody in their own way feels not good enough at some point in their life, feels like an outcast at some point in their life, feels 
displaced feel, mm -hmm. you know, so it's this common thread of we all get to watch somebody that succeed, yeah. that we all f gives us all hope. Right. You know? Speaking of major milestones, you are approaching, it'll have been 10 years since you've made your Broadway debut really? in Hair oh in 2019. Oh my goodness, you don't yeah. How does it, Hair, what it, how does it feel to be <laughs> approaching that milestone? Well, I didn't know until now. <laughs> That's how we do things. Oh my yeah. God, you come in 10 years, it's a lot. I, wow, that's really? Yeah, yeah. That had to have been such a singular experience for you guys too. I mean, just that that was such a precious and adored production and all of you were all so amazing. Like, it was, was that, so fun. Was that, and what a way to make your, your debut. It was literally the best way ever, I think, that you could have made your debut. Yeah. I mean, it was so flipping magical. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds gross and disgusting, but every we all loved each other so much. It was such <laughs> a fun place to work and it was such a free atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, like we got material to create, wise, yeah. but also, yeah. And we got to create our own, Diane let us create this tribe, which mm -hmm. was amazing. And so to go out into the audience and like have that camaraderie with the audience yeah. was so magical and fun. And I can't believe it's been 10 years almost. Right. <laughs> was well, then it should come back. Exactly, exactly. Make it happen. Let's go. Make it happen. <laughs> exactly. And you've done, you've done Broadway. You've done, you, you've gone on tours. Yeah. What, what's the most challenging part of where you are now? I think the most challenging part of it stays the same no matter where you are in your career, and that is what's next. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Yes. Yeah. And no matter I, where, you, how far. Or how not far you it's just this lifestyle of never quite knowing what you're gonna do you know mm -hmm. and when it rains it pours one minute you'll get two Broadway shows in a day and right. then you won't have a Broadway show or you know or maybe you want to do TV and film now or you know it's just it's always it's it's that flux of never you know what I mean yeah loving the gypsy lifestyle right and on the other side of that what's the most rewarding part of where you are now I think coming into my own as a performer and and not apologizing for the gifts that have been given to me mm -hmm. is I think every performer's um, cross to bear because sure. it's like why do you why why did I this why am, I'm so lucky right. you know what I mean we're yeah. so lucky to get to do what we do and I think especially as women I don't I don't know but I can't vouch for men because I'm not a man but I think we all get that imposter syndrome a little bit yeah. of like because it's, we work really hard, but it is a natural gift that was bestowed on you, right? To mm -hmm. get to do what you do. And it's like, do I really get to do this? This, <laughs> is, this is so great. Like, no, somebody's gonna take this away and be like, no, 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 you <laughs> no, know what I mean? So it's like, I finally at this point in my life being like, no, I, this is great. Like, I, I get to do this. The dream and came true. The dream yeah. came true. And, right. and that really happened. Yeah. So yay. And you provide, you are an inspiration to so many. Uh, so you you truly are. Who or what inspires you? Oh God, so many things. Well, when I was a little girl, I watched Shirley Temple movies. Oh, the best. I loved Shirley Temple. <laughs> the best. <laughs> <laughs> they were the best, that's the right? Yeah, yeah, that's what we do in Connecticut. Yes, we watched watch Shirley. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's a Connecticut yeah. thing. <laughs> It is. And then uh, Bernadette Peters, I mm. I just like, she can do no wrong in my book. Yeah. I just, I love her so much. And right now, Jessie Mueller, I mean, like, come on, anything she does is Adore like, her. yeah, I mean, she she can do no wrong. Right. So great. They th Those women inspire me so much um, all the time, yeah. Thank you so much. It's been so lovely chatting with so you. Nice to meet Thank you so you much come. for coming. Yes. <laughs> Make sure you go see Jackie Burns in Wicked at the Gershwin Theatre. When we come back, Jennifer Nettles and Anne Lee Ashford offer their gorgeous vocals to Wicked's As Long As You're Mine. Everyone's celebrating John Lithgow's return to Broadway in Stories by Heart. It's uplifting and superb, a joyful night of pure entertainment. You can't miss John Lithgow in Stories by Heart through March 4th only. This is delightful. Hello, my name is Diana Rigg and I'm playing Mrs. Higgins in a revival of My Fair Lady, which is going to open in April. And you are watching the Broadway.com show. Thank you for watching the Broadway.com show. We leave you with a performance of Wicked's As Long As You're Mine from Jennifer Nettles and Annalie Ashford. See you next week.